Hey everyone, uh, I got an exciting show for you today. I have another buy and hold investor. Uh, as you know, that's something I did for 15 years and uh, I thought it'd be great to get another buy and hold investor on the, on the show. So Robert Biggerstaff has been nice enough to reach out and say he wanted to be on it. Uh, so let's welcome Robert. How are you doing this morning, Robert? I'm phenomenal. Thanks. I appreciate you having me. Oh, excellent. It's always fun to talk to buy and hold investors. We, we sometimes get lost in the sexiness of flipping or wholesaling. Uh, but you know, that's just another form of a job. Uh, and, and buying, yeah, and buy and hold is something that uh, near and dear to my heart. So I, I had to get you on the show. So, so where, so tell the, tell us where, where you live, where you invest, uh, what, what attracted you to buy and hold today and you know, what's the portfolio look like? Currently I'm at 11 doors that I have that are producing income. I started 17 years ago. Um, I didn't have any formula as far as what I needed per doors. I didn't have any end game goal in mind or anything like that. And it was kind of ironic. A person, um, ended up telling me about a house that he had that, that his mother, um, was living in and he needed to sell it. And it, cause I had asked him, I said, you know, with, um, you having rentals, what would you suggest to somebody that's just getting into it? And of course he said, Oh, they suck. I hate them. <laughs> like it whatsoever. I wouldn't recommend it to anybody but I got a place for sale if you want to buy it. And, <laughs> I said, okay. and um, so we ended up, um, I told him that I could uh, um, qualify without having a clear termite. Um, you know, 17 years ago, the industry was a whole lot different and everything. We had, you know, 125% cash out refis available back then. And so, um, you know, it was kind of like the wild, wild west with real estate. And I ended up not being able to do what I told him. And so I called him and said, Hey, you keep the $500 uh, earnest money. And uh, he called me back and basically said, I'll finance it to you for 250 bucks for a year. You make all the repairs and then do a balloon on it and qualify for the mortgage. And that's how, and I still have that property today. That is, that is that's awesome. How I started. Yes. Yeah. And, and there's so much there. I, I love to just unpack people's stories when they go through it. First and foremost, um, I hear from a lot of people, oh, you can't be a landlord, landlord's terrible, you know, tenants, toilets, termites. Um, you know, I, I frankly like the fact that people think that, right? Uh, I've been a landlord. I started in 03, so about 16 years ago, right? So similar right. time frame, right? Lending was crazy, just totally different ballgame. We, we can get into that uh, if we want later. Uh, but where I was going with that is the more people that are turned off by being a landlord, better opportunities I have, right? Inflation, um, you know, more, be, a roof over your head is just almost as important as oxygen, food, and water, right? People don't want to live outside. Uh, and I've seen 30% rent in, increases. I saw, you know, another 10% just this year. Um, so I, I love being a landlord. Yes, me as well. Yeah. So, um, and, and I, I forget, did you say you're in Florida, right? Yes, in Pensacola, Florida. Pensacola, Florida. Is I forgive me, I'm horrible at geography. Is that south, east, west of what, what part? Where are the Panhandle? We're five miles from the Alabama border. Ah, so north. Okay, very cool. All right. So 17 years ago, you get a house, you do owner financing, you you do the repairs, you cash them out. Had had to be exciting. Yes, it was very much so. And then I actually uh, got upside down with it to a certain degree and got 25 grand out of it. I think about 12 years ago. And, um, you know, so like I said, it, it was crazy back then. And, um, and I certainly wasn't educated. We didn't have the internet access like we do today. There was no bigger pockets. There weren't people like you that were, you know, informing newbies like me. And so, you know, there's a lot of stumbling that was going on. Oh, that is hilarious. Uh, I write about in my book, One Rental at a Time, about my first property. Mine was on Norris Drive. We did it right, right? We bought it 20% down, didn't know any better bank financing. Two or three years later, like you, I went back and refinanced it, cash out. And again, I, I call it negative, or I call it being an alligator, right? It, it right. consumed cash every month. Right. Uh, now I go around, my, my icon is this alligator eating bags worth of money because I want people to understand that that's a bad idea. <laughs> right. <laughs> so that's, that's really cool. So, so you go from that first house, um, you know, how, what was the transition? Every couple of years you found another one or, or how'd that work out? Well, ironically, with us being in Florida, if, you know, our big natural disaster that occurs on a fairly regular basis are hurricanes. 
And so I um, had a house in a neighborhood that was fairly close to the water, went and stayed um, for the hurricane with somebody else. And this place became a rental for the next 13 years. And so then I kind of moved around some, started acquiring properties and held on to them. And so that kind of got my uh, mind moving in the sense of, you know, hey, there's a possibility to make some money with this, you know, and then the thought of being able to make money while I was sleeping was so advantageous and so enticing, you know, it, and I'm making money while we're doing this. Absolutely. You know, that, that I love about it, you know, um, and I've been really blessed and fortunate that I've done so many different things for a living and I'm one of those people that really doesn't play well with corporate America and times that I've jumped in and out of there. Um, you know, I've learned a tremendous amount as far as systems and policies and how important they are, but I've been able to take some of that and start incorporating it into not only my construction business, but with the real estate as well. Very, very cool. So I'm curious, these 11 properties, are they within 25 miles of each other, hundred miles? How close are they in proximity to each other? Um, I think the furthest, uh, two doors are, is probably less than eight miles. And so they're very convenient in the sense that, you know, everything's right here in town. Um, and you know, up until about two months ago, I'd been managing them myself and also collecting rents myself and I that to anybody. And we are in the process of making a transition with that. Yeah. So tell me about that. So just so we can just stay on the same page. Uh, I, I, I invest, I invest in a market two and a half hours away. So self-managing was never an option, even in the beginning. Um, and frankly, you couldn't pay me to do it. Property management is very hard. And um, I'm blessed to have a team after, you know, working through some, some, some deadbeats to find one that works. So uh, I'm curious how self-management was, was for you. Um, it worked fairly well. Um, I have never had a strong point as far as, um, being organized or having systems, um, you know, I'm kind of more the bull charge, let's get it done. Oops, we could have done this maybe a different way and if we had taken our time and planned it a little bit better. And so what's ended up happening is like one of the things that I'm going through right now, I've had one of my properties that the lease expired about seven months ago. I never went up on the rent. They've been on month to month and then unfortunately, they've moved mom and dad in the place as well. And so, you know, with the new policies and going to being a business and not a hobby and running it like a business, now I'm having to go back and say, hey, look, you know, either you can sign a lease or you can go ahead and move, um, you know, and, and I didn't say that immediately to him. I said, you know, these are the choices that we're faced with. Right. Um, what would like to do, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and my business, I'm looking at it more in the long-term sense and have learned the value of screening tenants and that it is much better to have a vacant property than it is a bad tenant every day of the week. And if you're new, I can't stress how crucial it is to screen your tenants. Amen. I would keep a property vacant a month before, before I would put in even a questionable tenant. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm curious, you mentioned a transition. Um, does that mean you're, you're transitioning into a business that you're still running and you're still the man or are you outsourcing property management to someone else? Well, I'm in a unique situation that I have a construction repair building maintenance business. Ah. I've got an employee that has former experience doing property management. And so basically I've turned the reins over to her and said, Hey, these are the things that I need you to start doing with this and everything. So a lot of that is off of my plate now. Um, and it's been working out real well. You know, one of the things that I sat there and I looked at as far as what my end game goal is, is to start building a lifestyle that I want to live. And part of that is, is, you know, not being the one with the phone. And so yeah. you know, we've got a phone that, you know, it rings and it's only for rental business and, and, you know, she'll take the calls or she'll send out text messages, you know, and I, another thing that I learned about was, you know, pre-qualify the tenant first. As soon as they make contact with us, I send them a letter and say, answer these questions for me. Once they send it back, if it looks like they're a contender for the property, then I'll go ahead and get them to do the background and credit check after I show them pictures of the property, because if they don't want to live there, there's no sense in us going forward. Yeah. If, 
we do, then we'll go ahead and do that. It does cost them money. And I can't stress enough that what that tells me is, is they've got some skin in the game because that's basically the industry standard now. Mm-hmm. It, have to pay some money for the background check, you know? So it's no longer, oh my gosh, I can't believe you're making me do this. They already know to expect it because that's basically the way everybody's operating nowadays. So, you know, once we've established that this person, um, the potential resident is qualified, okay, then that's when we'll actually get to the point of actually having a lease and showing up at the house and letting them take a look at it. I spent a lot of time, man, with looky lose and tire kicking. <laughs> Thing, and it was my own fault, you know. It's kind of like what you and I just spoke about 10 minutes ago when you said, you know, these people are always saying rentals are bad. Every person that I've ever heard say that was poor management. Yes. I've never heard somebody, you know, I worked for a guy that he had pizza places, sold them off, and at one time he had over 600 mobile homes, and that guy just absolutely loves it, you know, and he's still hands on with it, you know, got wow. a big house, got a three airplanes, you know, his private airstrip and everything like that. But it, but he loves it, you know, but he's also got systems in place to make everything run smooth and easier. And that's one of the keys that I've found with, you know, because I always look at who's out there in a place that I want to be at, you know, and all of them have systems, you know, they're not flying by the seat of their pants and building empires. That is awesome. Uh, I, I agree a hundred percent, a thousand percent. That's spectacular. Again, you know, I've created this this YouTube channel. I created a book. They're all named One Rental at a Time because that's how I had to do it, right? I had a busy full-time tech, tech job, traveled all over the world, and I was just focused on the next deal. So rewind the clock for me and take me from the first deal to the second to the third deal because, again, it sounds like you did One Rental at a Time. So let's talk about it. Right. Um, you know, the the house that I'm actually doing this interview from, it had been a rental for 13 years and it's really the only house that I've ever enjoyed coming home to. <laughs> uh, a friend of mine told me, he said, that's the only place you put pictures on the wall, Robert. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> um, the rest of them have been just um, basically holding acquires in the sense that um, I went in partners with a friend and long story short, we had two houses that um, got flooded and so we were upside down and couldn't rent them. And so um, they were foreclosed on. Um, two of those properties had been uh, mobile homes with their own property that we had paid cash for. And so we had a falling out, weren't speaking. And it wasn't enough money to go to court over. You know, so basically it was set up that whoever dies, the other person inherits them. So I was just biding my time. And then I get a call from code enforcement says, hey, I got these liens on these properties. What do you want to do about them? And I was like, well, what did the other person say? And they said, there is nobody else. You know, that person had quit claim deeded them over to me so that ah. uh, they escaped the liens and everything, which I was like, way cool, man, because now I had these two properties. And, uh, you know, um, they'd been vacant for over a year, got them back up and running. And now both of them combined is about $1,000 a month you know, income from both of those doors right there. So, you know, that's how two of them came about. Um, another property, I had been putting the word out to people um, in various avenues and just saying, hey, I buy houses. And if you, um, you know, send me a lead and I do something, I love paying finder's fees. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I ended up getting this house and um, we ended up doing the deal. And I told the guy it was $12,000. And I told him, I said, um, you know, I'm going to bring you cash. And uh, he was all for it and everything. And then I found out that you can't pay cash for houses any longer. You know, ah. there's got to be a trail. And so I went back and said, hey, man, I can't do what I said I was going to do. And he was disappointed. And I found out why. You know, he had a bunch of liens and judgments against him. So he ah. <laughs> with as much as he thought he was. But right. we ended up doing the deal as well. And the really cool thing was is that there was a contract from a wholesaler on the kitchen counter dated a month before he and I had gotten together and they were $1,500 higher than I was. And the thing about it was, is that the thing I was so happy about was I was on the money, you know, I was right where, you know, basically the big boys had valued something at and everything. And I mean, I came in a little bit lower and whatnot. Um, you know, but that told me that where my mindset was at was correct because I had started doing research, you know, and I'd started figuring out that, a new roof is going to cost this AC is going to cost this. And, you know, and so what, and what's the market rent for this property in this neighborhood, you know, is it going to make sense? So 
you know, that particular property, I think I've got about 24 to 25 into it and it pays 1100 a month. Wow. Yeah. So, I, and I mean, it's hard to beat those numbers. Um, the next thing that happened was I was uh, at a friend's house that she was actually doing um, and flipping this. And so I was doing some work for her. a guy comes in that lives across the street. He's got rental properties and he says, Hey, Mr. Paul's got this duplex next door across the street. It's for sale. And, um, and then we also got one side that's available if you know anybody looking to buy or rent a place and everything. And I was like, okay. So I went over there, took a look at it. And I asked them, I said, well, what do you want for it? And they were like, well, 90,000. And I said, okay. And so I called him back that night and said, Hey, you know, will he own or finance it with a down payment? He called me back the next day. He said, yeah, absolutely. And so that's how I ended up with that property right there. So awesome. You know, yeah. It's just doing the footwork, man, and getting out there and talking with people and everything. And, you know, I know this is a kind of a side note, but for the people that are new out there and you're kind of dragging your feet about doing the first deal, a little apprehensive, I walked from a deal a month and a half ago and it was correct every day of the week for me to walk from it. Okay. However, I called them back up two days ago and said, is that deal still available? Because there's a different Avenue that I can do with it and be able to make some money. He said, yes, absolutely. And my whole thing was, is even if he says, no, it's not, or I don't want to deal with you, I needed to work through that fear of going back and making that phone call because there's no telling how much meat you'll leave on a plate if you don't do things like that. You know, all the successful people, man, their motion, emotions are totally out of the situation. They're like a robot. If it doesn't work, offer this. If that doesn't work, do this, it, you know. And so many people are like, oh my gosh, man, I, I, I don't know. Oh, that, that offer's too low. I, I couldn't do that. That's going to embarrass me or it's going to embarrass them. And it's like, no, make that offer, man. And if it doesn't embarrass you, you're too high. Ex you know? Oh man, this, this, is, this is a great conversation. There's so much here. First and foremost, all the deals that come to you over time are because of networking. Real estate is a people business. Tell people what you do. Have the conversations. I mean, plenty of examples you just laid out where that came into play. The other thing is know your numbers. What I tell people that are stuck on analysis paralysis is what's your buying criteria? Right. And 99 times out of 100, they have no idea. And I, I, I say, stop. Go away. Figure out what your buying criteria is. I don't care. I don't care if it's, I don't care what it is, but as long until you have one, stop. Then have a buying criteria, and then when it fits in the box, be the robot. If it doesn't right. fit in the box, move on. If it doesn't right. fit in the box, lower the number, right? Make it fit in the box. And then when it fits in the box, pull the trigger. Right. Um, that's great advice. Uh, that's, that's awesome, Robert. So uh, and you say that because um, I was telling my girlfriend, I said, there's so many times that um, I read on Bigger Pockets, somebody says, well, help me analyze this deal. And it's like, dude, you're not giving me anything else to go on. I've done this for 17 years. I know what I've got in the bank. You know, I know where my risk aversion is. You know, it doesn't frighten me to have a property vacant for 90 days, you know, as opposed to if you're new and everything you're doing is, you know, your down payment and you've got no reserves, it's probably, you know, disheartening like yeah. everything to even think that way. Okay. But so many people are just the opposite of what you said. They have no idea what their numbers are. They have no idea where they need to be at. You know, they have no idea as far as, is that a point and a half property? Is that a 2% property? You know, what do I want my ROI to be? Um, you know, am I averaging 350 a door? Am I getting a hundred bucks a door, you know? And then you sit there and talk to them and it's like, you know, do you understand that, you know, cause with me and when I bring in a rent, you know, I've calculated out that, you know, basically a water heater costs you $7 a month. It'll last for about 10 years. You know, and you're looking at about a thousand bucks to have a professional replace it. A roof mm -hmm. will last you know, 25, so that's about $35 a month. Well, you need to take that money out, you know, because I hear people saying, oh man, I'm cash flowing $75 a month. And I'm like, you're broke. Nah. You just don't know it yet. You're going to be broke, you know? And they're like, well, why do you say that, man? Why are you negative, Nancy? And I'm like, dude, I'm just here to tell you, man, because, you know, you bought that house and that roof's 12 years old. You got eight years left on it and you're not going to have the money to be able to replace it. So start saving, you know? And, um, but the biggest thing is, is like you said, you know, people aren't willing to do the footwork anymore. They want somebody to spoon feed them all these numbers, all this formula and everything like that. And you got to figure out what works for you. You know, what your, your analysis and mine could be two totally different things. Our demographics are different. Our position in the country is different, you know? 
Um, it's not uncommon where I live to buy a house for, you know, 30, 40,000, 50,000 and be able to rent it for 800 a month. You know, I hear people tell me, so you can't buy anything in my town for less than 150,000, you know, so there's differences that have to be taken into account and people aren't willing to educate themselves. And it's like, you know, walking into a casino with, you know, a hundred thousand and playing a game you have no idea about. It's almost a guaranteed way to lose your money, you know? Yeah. So. This is, this is awesome. And it's such great advice. Again, people, if you don't know your numbers, don't get lost in Excel, right? Excel is a powerful thing, but until you know why you want to buy or what your return is or what your minimum cash flow is, or I don't care what the number is, that's for you to decide, but don't get lost in these fancy Excel spreadsheets. They will just confuse you. Also, I don't believe in the vocabulary that we throw around in real estate for newbies, right? Cash on cash, uh, cap rate, IRRs. Who cares? How much money are you putting down and how much money are you getting back? Just do that. Uh, and right. then you can get more advanced and, and figure out what all these people are talking about. But simplify, simplify, simplify. And, and buying one rental at a time, the simplest way to go, uh, in my yeah. opinion. So, um, What was the time frame you know, it's, your first one was kind of like 2002, it feels like, you know, did it go like 2002, 2004? And I'm asking because you and I both wrote the crazy wave up and then the crazy wave down. And I'm, I'm curious how you were active during that cycle. Well, and here's the thing is, is that you were much more astute with yours than I was with mine because I, I really didn't do anything um, on purpose. You know, I'm, I always say God favors rednecks and idiots, so I get double covered. <laughs> And, uh, you know, like I said, I kept moving from house to house and then I would just turn around and rent my property. You know, the first house I bought was a two bedroom, one bath, central heat and air for 28,000, man. My payment was 225 a month and I sold it like an idiot. You know, I bought it right before I turned 21 and I, and I regret, I, I drive by it at least weekly you know? <laughs> every day of my life, man. And, um, you know, and so after that point, I kept on, I was like, you know, um, I can make some money with these things, you know, and, uh, and so, but basically to get back to your question is um, probably about 07, 08, I had acquired three more properties. So I think the inventory was at four doors um, just because of moving around and stuff sure. like that. Then um, went in partners with that uh, person and we bought five properties together. And so then the portfolio expanded with that. Um, we had the falling out, the houses went into foreclosure. Um, and for those that are listening and have had that, it's not the end of the world. Okay. You just got to get creative and just keep on trudging along. And, um, you know, just remember every question you never ask, the answer will always be no. Um, so we kept on muddling through that and everything. And, um, and in the last, oh, I think it's about two and a half years, Mike, I've uh, acquired five properties. And um, one of them was just a crazy deal where, um, you know, I ended up with a property with a cottage on it for five grand and that came through networking because somebody knew that I was into real estate and, you know, would try to help somebody out and be creative with it and everything like that. Unfortunately, they didn't hold up their end. Um, and here we are, you know, but those things do happen. And, you know, one thing about it, just as you had said, if nobody knows what you're doing, it'll never happen. Yeah, exactly. So I'm curious, this is, this is so much fun. And I, I love how similar our stories are with one rental at a time, just being the way to go. Where do you envision taking this, right? Do you have a plan for the next, I don't know, one, three, five years? What, what, what's your vision? I do. The next thing that I would really like to do is get, um, uh, acquire a cabin in the Carolinas and start doing some short term rental. Ah, because okay. I'm 47 and my goal is when I'm 60 to have 50,000 a month coming in from rental properties. Part of that is going to be a uh, cabin in the mountains and I ride Harleys. And so I want the big toy hauler with a big diesel truck to go to the keys in Colorado and stuff. Yeah. And so I'm trying to start putting those in place. And so that, you know, in the next 13 years, I'll have that paid off. And so those expenses won't really be there. And at 50,000 a month, I've got my own team, you know, in place, they'll be able to do the maintenance, the management and everything like that um, to where I'm not having to be hands on because that's really where it's at. You know, yeah. is the, all money is, is freedom. You know, it, it gives us the ability to do that, you know? And so you get one rental, and we'll just say you cash flow 250. You get a second rental, you know, it's 300. Now we're up to 550. You know, that's what, $75,000, $8,000 extra every year 
that you're basically not having to lift a finger to produce any kind of income from. Yeah. And, so, and that's money showing up in the mailbox or it's showing up in your rental account. However, it's happening, you know, but it's, you know, one rental at a time. I mean, Rome wasn't built overnight, you know, yeah. and I've talked to guys, there's another guy over in Jacksonville named Mark Freeze. You know, he's buying two houses a month. He's got 31 houses. They're all, you know, C and high D properties, but 30 to $40,000 range. He's over there just absolutely killing it. Great guy, you know, um, but he did it one at a time, just like what you're talking about. And so, you know, I, I haven't heard too many people say, well, I ended up buying a portfolio right off the bat. No. You know, and most of them are, you know, 98% of them are saying, well, I got one house and then I got two. And then I started seeing, you know, six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month showing up extra. And I was like, hey, man, this is pretty cool. You know, <laughs> and then but I'm at four and five and I'm like, you know, that's almost like having a, 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 a part time job and really not having to work it, you know. And so it happens like that, just as you're saying, you know, one rental at a time. That's very cool. So um, the 50,000, that's the gross number? Yes, yes. That's what my goal is, is to have 50,000. I figure, you know, net, I should be walking away with about 30 each month. And yeah. I should be able to yeah. play that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. 50 is kind of 25, 30, depending on the expenses and whatever. Yeah, right. you, you can. Yeah, if you can't live on 25 net, you have a spending problem, not an income problem. Preach. That's what it's like. <laughs> yeah, that's that that yeah that that would be very awesome. And and this is this is fun. And and short term rentals, right? The whole Airbnb, right? That's what you mean by short term rental. Well, not only that, but I had a friend of mine that they had bought a place in the Carolinas, and what he did was he made a scrapbook, and he would just pass that scrapbook among his friends, and so he would actually keep it rented about five to seven months out of the year, and it would make the payment and also cash flow positively for the rest of the year. And so, you know, they ended up paying that uh, 30 year note off in like 13 years by doing that. Oh. And, and, and this was before Airbnb was out there. Right. Right. Wow. You know? Yeah. So, um, and I mean, really my thing is, is just to have the place because here in Pensacola, the humidity is absolutely brutal. So I want to be able to go up there during the summertime because this fat boy likes to move around a little bit, <laughs> I'm you know, that lifestyle that I enjoy living. So that's what, you know, that's part of the plan right there. That's awesome. Robert, this has been so much fun. I appreciate you jumping on such short notice. Uh, if people want to get a hold of you or want to talk real estate, what's the best way for them to reach out to you? Is it Facebook? Is it phone? What, what, what do you want to, what, how do you want people to reach out to you? Uh, they can email me at rob883 at yahoo.com or they can hit me up on Facebook, Robert Biggerstaff. Um, you know, and I love talking with anybody that's willing to give me a little bit of their time and whatnot, because here's the thing is, is man, I don't care who you are, where you come from, your background, your sexual identity, your creed, religion, or lack of religion. This can work for you. We are in the greatest country of all, you know, I look at some people that are, you know, don't live in this country and the opportunities that I'm afforded on a daily basis, they just don't have, you know, and I am grateful for that, you know, um, to wake up every day and a uh, bed, roof over my house, get a warm cup of coffee with a refrigerator full of food, man, we're blessed, you know, yeah. and um, my blessings, you know, that glory goes to God, no doubt. And, um, and I greatly appreciate people like yourself, you know, that have put this information out for people like me to be able to absorb and help my business to grow, you know, because if it wasn't people like you that were sharing, it wouldn't happen, you know, and you touched on something that was really important. And that was having a team, you know, even Jesus Christ had to have the disciples. Okay. So that team is absolutely crucial, you know, and I found that out because man, I have banged my head and I ran a hobby, you know, for so many years and now it's going to be a business you know last year was a, a tough year in the sense that you know I had uh, um, I think it was five evictions and I only have me to blame for that because I wasn't very discerning in taking care of those blessings so I've had to do some things differently you people taught me that hey man if you're going to run it like a hobby you're going to end up being broke if you run it like a business it'll be very good for you and so that's what I've had to do and again I appreciate people putting out this information such as yourself because you know, it, that's how I learned, you know, is, is by asking those questions, like, what would you do differently if you were just starting out? Or, you know, you sit there and give me advice or, you know, you share your experience of, you know, I got X number of doors and this is what I found to be the way to do things, you know, kind of, you know, that guy, Mark in Jacksonville, same way, you know, I called him with a dumb question 
he's always got time for me. He always calls back or whatever. So it's, it's a wonderful thing, man. And I'm very blessed and, and happy to be a part of it as well. Uh, that's very nice of you to say. And again, <laughs> Uh, I, I would tell new people to reach out to Robert. I've seen him. I've seen his posting on Facebook and all this stuff. He's he's very positive. He's always telling it how it is, and he's he's just he's just one of those guys that's just honest and like here it is, right? No judgment, no thoughts. So this has been a lot of fun for me. Again, I appreciate you getting on this and short notice on this Sunday, uh, and and have a great day. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. And just remember, everybody, it's one rental at a time. It, you know. Get your first one under your belt. Get your second one. Get your third one. And then before you know it, you're going to blink your eyes and you'll be sitting there with 15 or 20 and, and the magic is happening, you know. So it all started with one for me. Perfect.